Hi, this is uh, Victor Differential Equations uh, Non-Defective Coefficient Matrix. So we're dealing with an introduction, then two major examples, one for real values and real eigenvectors, and the second one will be for complex conjugates. We'll start with the introduction. And we'll move on to the examples. If you remember from 9.2 vector formulation that we had two linearly independent solutions to the vector differential equation. We had two lambdas, two v's, and we came up with vector formulation. We wrote x1 and x2 as column n vectors. All right. Instead of writing x1 as in one line and x2 in a second line, now we have x1 as one column and x2 as another column. What's interesting is, notice these two guys right here are the same. If I pull e to the power minus 3t outside, I will have 1 and negative 2. And here, if I take e to the power 2t out, I will have 1 and a half which is interesting which we write as follows remember this a while ago whenever we started lambda mv that's the same format so the key point to notice is that both of these solutions are of the form x of t equals e to the lambda t v where lambda is a scalar and v is a constant vector so that's another way to write solutions now this gives me an idea of thinking that the general solution to the differential equation x prime equals ax may also have the same look and the same form the solution in general for the whole thing as a system could be written as e to the lambda t times v okay let's move on to investigate that to see if it goes back and forth and communicates here is x that we are assuming that it's going to take this look Finding the derivative of x will give me x prime. On this side, lambda goes down in the front, and I have lambda e to the lambda t v. Thus, x of t equals e to the lambda t times v is a solution to x prime equals ax, if and only if the following works. If you can't follow this 100%, I'm going to slow it down and show it to you instead of reading it. Okay, that's what I have here is up there. This is what I mean. X prime equals AX up here. Finding the derivative of X, we call it X prime. We did that from here to here. Lambda goes up front. I have A as is. X was replaced with E to the lambda T times V. Simplifying, as you could see, I got lambda V equals AV. Okay. So basically this right here is what I was trying to avoid to read it here to tell you where it's coming from or differently AV equals lambda V and that's basically what we're looking for so AV equals lambda V but this is the statement that lambda MV must be eigenvalue eigenvector pair of A and that's mainly what we're looking for let A be an n by n matrix of real constants and let lambda be an eigenvalue of A with corresponding eigenvector V. 
then x of t equals e to the lambda t v is a solution to the constant coefficient vector differential equation x prime equals ax on any interval. Here's a remark to move on to the second example later on. Notice that we have not assumed that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A are real. This preceding result holds in the complex case also. We're going to wait for that to show you how we're going to handle the complex solutions. Here's the first example. And after that, we have a theorem to tell you about the complex and the second example, and that should do it for this video. Example number one. Find the general solution to the following system of differential equations. We know how to write A, the coefficients 2, 1, negative 3, and negative 2, right there. We know how to find lambdas and Vs. Saving you some time from doing it step by step. We've done this many times in previous sections. And this section is not designed to show you how to find lambdas and Vs. It's the idea of how do you write the solution in another form. That's basically it. So just be patient with me and let's focus on the main point. Lambda 1 is 1. We'll give you V1. 1, negative 1. I have some steps for you, for you here, so you could follow if you want. But to save some time, let's move on. And here's lambda 2, which is negative 1, and I have the vector right here. So far, nothing is new on this page. Nothing. This We have been doing this for many sections for the last, what, since we started chapter 5. And we are in chapter 9. Nothing new. So, let's move on. To support that these two solutions are independent, we're going to use the Ronskian. Now, this is V1 and this is V2. We're not doing derivatives, as you can see, because we are dealing with column and vectors. The Ronskian is negative 2, which is never 0. So x1 and x2 as a set is a linearly, linearly independent on any interval solution set. Here's a general solution, and this is mainly what we are looking for. We know this already. C1x1 plus C2x2. So far, so good. This is x1 and this is x2 written in lambda and v, lambda, lambda and v, and this is another form, and that's another way to write it down. So you have it. It's not much, trust me. We've done this many times. That's one format. If you pull the 8 to the t inside, that's another format. Here's a th third one, because that's like two in one. That's a third one, and that's a fourth one. All right? That's it. There is nothing much to worry about in 9.4. We're dealing with non-defective. We're just like trying to see this as lambda and V. E to the lambda T. V. That's the only thing new on this example. Other than that, everything else the way we've seen it. Let's move on. Have an introduction to example number two with the complex conjugates and go over example number two. Now, let u of t and v of t be real valued vector functions. If W1 and W2, as you could see written this way, are complex conjugate solutions to x prime equals ax. Then 
we could pull x1 from this part right here u of t we could pull x2 from v of t so we just take the green parts right here u and v and we call them x1 and x2 are themselves real valued solutions to x prime equals x that's what you need to know in case if you have complex solutions here's the example in detail now this one here gave me a matrix of 0 2 negative 2 0 looking for lambdas we know how to do it I have the plus minus 2i of course when we have this we don't deal with both we'll just take one of them let's take 2i here's 2i this right here becomes 0 minus 2i 0 minus 2i and these two will stay the same to save you some time I have everything written that's 0 minus 2i and this is 0 minus 2i 2 minus 2 are the same I see too many 2's here divide by 2 divide by 2 I got this one here now I took this instead of switching rows look at i times i is i square and i square is negative 1 and I have a negative sign that will do it and we'll change this to 1 after that you see the second is opposite of this which means it will cancel now to read this I'm taking the time to show you how but as a as a bonus as a shortcut if you want you could from here read the answer let me tell you what to think of 1 and i take 1 and i and switch them and put a minus sign either place it doesn't matter let me show you what i mean those are the steps you can take your time look at the answer 1 and i i have i and 1 one of them has a minus i was second place now i is first place 1 was first place now 1 is second place now you might wonder like uh, why the minus in the front can I have it next to the one would that be true the answer is yes it doesn't make any difference let me show you why I move this part to the side so the minus is with the v2 if somebody else moves the v1 to the other side the minus will be with v1 it doesn't matter make sure you switch them and apply an opposite sign I don't want to make it too complicated with too many numbers just keep it in mind I will give you a quick example imagine if this is 5 and this is 6 just imagine so what's the answer remember 5 and 6 now it's going to be 6 and 5 with a minus sign somewhere so you could call it minus 6 and 5 or you could call it 6 and minus 5 either way is fine hopefully that's not too much if it's too much just follow the steps take your time and you will be fine now I have lambda which is 2i and I came up with a vector that has complex uh, parts in it which is minus i and 1 here's the main part let's start a new slide and clean it up on the slide here nothing is new you know how to handle complex numbers you know how to finish it I know it slows us down in algebra steps but it could be done but here we go on the new idea for this section I have lambda and v a complex valued solution to the given differential equation is w that's not the wrong scan it's just another way to write uh, solutions because it's complex they wrote it with w e to the power lambda t this is my lambda 2i 
V, which is negative I and 1. Now this part right here could be written in a different way. That's called Euler's formula using sine and cosine. Here we go. We're going to use Euler's formula, which is cosine 2t, that's e to the power a. This part here too goes down there and goes down there and i sine 2t. I have the vector v1 right there next to me. Just follow the formula from Euler to split them. Now, multiply this by negative i and multiply this by 1. When you multiply it by 1, nothing happens. Nothing changes, in other words. When you multiply this by negative i, the cosine will have a negative i in front. This has an i already with a negative i that's going to be negative i square, which is going to change it to a positive 1. You see the sine came up to be positive 1. And the cosine has a negative i with it. Alright? Second part times 1, nothing happens. Let's split them into two parts. I think we could do that. Do you remember when we talked about u and v? That's the u part, that's the v part. Ignoring the i, this is a u and this is a v, and they're both real solutions. That's going to be my x1, and that's going to be my x2. That's x1, and that's x2. Two real valued functions. That's interesting. And that's going to end up this example. So the general solution to the given differential equation is x equals c1 x1 plus c2 x2 or you could write it this way. One more time. So this slide covers the second example. Once you handle the algebra steps and get lambda 1 and v1 with complex numbers, we have e to the lambda T V with complex taking this into two parts using Euler's formula I have cosine and sine multiplying by the vector take them into two parts that's the U part that's the V part which is going to be called X1 and X2 and that should do it. I hope that it was clear. One more time, I'll put the timeline for example one and exam two. So you could click on it if you wanna go back and watch example number one or example number two for later on. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. As always, driver time and Thank you.